Hi everyone, it's uh, 4 p.m. Uh, in a, an unusually snowy Edinburgh. Um, this is the discussion uh, back-end team update for the last uh, five weeks. I'm Sean McGiven and I'm the uh, engineering manager for that team. Um, this is a cool thing. Um, in Epics, you can now uh, reorder issues. So um, these work like re related issues, but also like issue boards in the sense that you can um, order the issues in an epic in uh, whatever order you choose, probably priority. Um, that's a nice feature that we shipped in GitLab 10.4. So thanks to Yaka and Clement for working on that. Um, the next slide was going to show a speed improvement on the dashboard. So we have basically figured out how to make the dashboard work when filtering by label. Um, the problem is that we fixed the first problem and by making a query faster and removing another one that was completely useless, like the result was literally used nowhere. Um, but then when we fixed that, we found that we had another one that is almost useless, but not quite. So it takes a little bit more um, effort to get rid of that. I think hopefully by the time we release 10.4.0, um, we will have this fixed. Um, so yeah, thanks for Lipe for working on that. It's very nearly there. It's just not quite. Um, similarly with search, um, uh, search is kind of a problem in general. Um, so when I talk about search here, I'm talking about global search. So using the um, search box in the top right um, of the GitLab interface. Um, we have Elasticsearch available as an enterprise edition feature, but we can't use it on gitlab.com at the moment. And um, it's quite a lot of engineering work to uh, unblock that. So in the meantime, we need to make sure that the existing search works OK, but it struggles because it's searching everything you can see. But on a large instance like gitlab.com, everything you see includes uh, hundreds of thousands of issues um, because there are lots of public projects with public issues, like the um, GitLab Community Edition project, for instance, and everybody can see those issues. So um, we don't get to filter out a lot of the search results, um, and it's uh, problematic for query performance. We did improve the query performance here, um, but only for certain inputs. Like it, it depends how many results are in your result set. So what we're doing now is um, limiting that to, I think it was either 1,000 or 10,000. So if you have more than 10,000 issues, we will just show that there are 10,000 plus issues in the results. We don't expect people are actually searching and paging through um, 10,000 results. In fact, we know they aren't because um, it times out, it doesn't work. So um, Jan's been doing a great job on this. Um, the issue is linked in the title of this slide. And you can see there's a whole bunch of um, attempted query improvements and query plans that we've run through um, in iterating on trying to fix this. Again, hopefully in the final 10.4 release, this will um, be addressed. So both of these issues are um, like regionals, like they're this close to this, this close. So we're almost done. Uh, another thing that's been challenging um, has been moving uploads to object storage. We wanted to get this done in 10.4. Um, it's not going to be in 10.4, it's going to be 10.5. It's been challenging for a few reasons. Um, the week before the freeze, we thought we had 80% done, and we probably had over 80% left um, in terms of effort, if not in terms of code changes. Um, Mikhail's written up a great uh, description of the schema of the um, uh, the way upload paths work. So sorry when I talk about uploads here, I'm talking about like um, user avatars, group avatars, project avatars. Um, whenever you drag a file or paste a screenshot into a comment or an issue or a merge request, um, that's an upload. So we're trying to enable those to be moved to object storage. And it turns out that a lot of the code um, elsewhere assumes that it knows what part of that path is, but not the rest of it, and assumes that it can just ask for part of it when really it should ask for all of it. Um, we also discovered while working on this that is not strictly related, but um, we use these directories for temporary uploads in Workhorse, I think, uh, that we have both temp upload and temp uploads. I can't remember which is which, but one is used for CI artifacts and one is used for LFS files. And it's super confusing that we have both and uh, there's that arbitrary difference between them. Um, 
basically what happened here was um, when we started working on this issue, we were, yeah, we just didn't realize how much this touched and how much complexity there was. We probably should have reached out to a couple of people who we know had expertise in certain areas of how these uploads were used. Um, when we were scoping it out to get a better estimate sooner. Um, so Mikhail has been doing a really great job on this. I think it's uh, finally ready for review um, today and everything's passing. So um, we're going to go forward from there. Uh, we got some API improvements. Um, we have uh, APIs now for group issue boards, epics and epic issues going forward for portfolio management, which involves epics and roadmaps and so on. We will try and keep the public API um, parity with every feature so that we don't have to think about this again. Um, it's something we should do for every feature, but sometimes we're not so great about it. Um, with portfolio management, we really want to make sure that that's, that's there from the start for every feature. Uh, we have our OKRs, which I'm not going to go through in too much detail. They're on the OKR page. Um, the uh, significant things are um, or just as a high level, we're looking to make sure that community contributions are under control. We want to make sure our bug backlog is under control. We want to make sure that important issues from different teams. So we have these, we currently have different um, priority labels for security support and availability um, from the infrastructure team. Um, all the essential issues from those are resolved. Uh, in future, I think we will try and move to a single um, set of priority labels so we don't have this like three different lengths for three different teams as priorities. Um, the other thing is we want to move to Rails 5. Um, we're going to pick up work again on that in the 10.6 development cycle and we will see where we get. Um, it is probable that we will need to um, adapt the existing MR to make it so that we can run the app in Rails 4 mode or in Rails 5 mode and then um, merge that and then work towards Rails 5 um, compatibility incrementally. Uh, we're also hiring. Um, I think Eric's had this in a previous update. Uh, basically, the plan is to double the team size by hiring six developers uh, over the course of 2018. I think hopefully we have one starting in the next couple of weeks. So that's a great start to the year. Um, yeah, if you work at GitLab, if you don't work at GitLab, please tell your friends anyway. But if you do work at GitLab um, and you qualify for a referral bonus, you can get a referral bonus by referring someone who's hired. So um, please do that. <laughs> um, uh, what's next on the agenda? So um, Jan is going to be working more on portfolio management, and Yaka will um, be like responsible for reviewing that. Um, you can see the features there. Um, as you mentioned in his update yesterday, we're going to start working on batch commenting in MRs in this release, but we are aiming to ship it in 10.6 because there are some front-end blockers there at the moment. Um, so shipping it in 10.5 isn't really realistic. And um, diff collapsing is something that's been a problem for a while. Um, we have a bunch of different limits, hard limits, soft limits um, for both blob sizes and diff sizes, and they feed into each other in weird ways. And diff collapsing is kind of confusing to explain to people, but it's also kind of confusing to make better. This is something that uh, I've been talking about with um, Victor, who's the product manager for discussion. And we've talked about it quite a lot. We haven't really come up with a great solution yet, but we are talking about it and trying to think of a way to make this better. Um, so yeah, uh, sorry, that was nine minutes, so it's a bit long. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing and see if there are any questions. <laughs> Bob, you were, you were so close with the LFS and uh, attachments thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to know that. Um, it doesn't look like there are any other questions. I'll give everybody uh, 15 seconds, probably. Otherwise, um, yeah. Remy's excited about batch commenting in MRs. Yeah, so am I. So I just do this manually at the moment. So I just um, click a bunch of lines, start drafting a bunch of comments. Um, and then when I'm sort of done reading the diff, I go back up and click comment on all of them. So it would be nice to have that native in the application. Cool. Well, um, have a great day, everybody. And I'll see you on the team call.